within the inspiration of what it is that I made for you tonight in the sushi. Now, in sushi restaurants, generally it's always freshest fish in the world. So within this, you know, I made like a furumaki. So you got sashimi, and then you have sushi, furumaki, and amakaze. So with amakaze, it's generally whatever the chef is inspired to make for you. So it could be the best ingredients in the world, or it could be something he just wants to utilize and, and, and try for the first time. So basically, that's where I'm at with this. Uh, within the ingredients with, which was in the pantry that I was presented and, and looked at, most people say, oh, I don't have anything in my pantry and I don't know what to make. It's not because they don't have great food in their pantry. It's because they just don't know what to do with it. Right. So for me to walk into pantries all across America or wherever I am in the world and just say, okay, you've got this product, you've got this product, it, it, it's sort of genius. So within the compilation of what it is that I made here, we have Spanish mackerel, and then we have wonderful sushi rice that you know, comes from Japan. We've got chives, I've got caviar that is uh, the only wild caught caviar in the world. It comes from Kentucky from a dear friend, dear friend of mine. Um, then we have avocado, we have cream cheese, so taken on a California roll, but with the mackerel. But then with a little bit of hoisin, and then with uh, 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 bok choy leaves, and then with uh, uh, chives, and then uh, a little bit of wasabi and the ginger, uh, and then uh, fresh sprouts that I grew. Uh, just wow. bean sprouts, which are mung bean sprouts, lentil sprouts, and onion sprouts um, that I incorporated within within the sushi, along with some sesame seeds, the caviar, and then the mackerel itself, uh, canned mackerel for that point. But you wouldn't know the difference of whether or not the mackerel was fresh or whether or not it was different unless you're just a freaking true aficionado to understand fish. But for people that like sushi, that, you know, it, it, it's something on, 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 the, on the dark side for me. It's like, you know, uh, when Pink Floyd made Dark Side of the Moon. Okay, <laughs> you know, what am I going to do? I'm going to make something really cool, but it's all in the umami and in the flavor in between the seaweed, in between the sushi rice that I made uncon un unconventionally compared to a sushi chef. But in a home, I pulled off something that, you know, would be considered any place you've ever eaten oh sushi gosh. before. That is just as qualified as being that. And you could sure. do this as well uh, in your own home. Uh, within, you know, a lot of people are like, well, I don't know how to make sushi. Well, you got Google, go on there and just watch a couple videotapes. And if you go buy the little kit, you do the thing, you get the pickle dinner, you get the wasabi, and then you just decide what you want to put in there. There's nothing saying that you can't make grilled rotisserie chicken sure. sushi sure. Uh, for the kids to eat because they don't want to eat fish. Or you can make, um, you know, I don't care, uh, go to Chick-fil-A, bring right. Chick-fil-A home, sure. right? You go and get your Chick-fil-A, bring that in, chop it up, uh, thin strips, and put that in your sushi. And, and put it with the Chick-fil-A sauce. And put sure. that in between the rice and the seaweed and that. And then and you, you, can, you can make sick for lace sushi. <laughs> sure. But you understand that, like, you can get kids to eat the sushi, but eat. you want to tend to get them to eat sushi, then you wean off the chick fil and then you start putting other better, healthier things in there. Uh, like, like, you know, uh, uh, more fish, but it gets them accustomed to eating food from an international basis outside of just eating deep fried food all the time. Exactly. That you, you, you expand their horizons on, on, on food that they can eat. Sure. And, you know, within articles that I've written for different books and the like of that, it's how to get kids accustomed to eating something different right. than what they're used to, that all their friends eat, because they, one, don't want to be made fun of, two, they're like, you know, socially it's not like really good, or they just don't know, because everybody says, ooh, oysters are terrible, oh, they taste like crap, and, you know, these things, but if you go to Louisiana, you know, crawfish and uh, oysters and that. That's what that is, but in Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, that's a different story. Mm -hmm. Because kids are used to eating whatever they're used to being brought up with. So whatever grandma makes, that becomes something that they know from a wee bit, three years old and up. That's what they become accustomed to. Because grandma's not making sushi. No, there's you grandma's understand? not making sushi. So I if agree. the parents do not do that and introduce them to different food. So in Korean food, you have uh, bibimbap, fried rice. I mean, it's easy stuff. You know, you got extra rice, fried rice, and you extra rice left over from making rice or, or chicken fried rice. You take that and you put that together, and you can actually take uh, thin sliced uh, short ribs and make bulgogi, which is a Korean dish. And then you just take wachung, put it on there, and then take that and then chop it up 
and then put it in the fried rice, toss it up, put it in a bowl, drop a fried egg on it, a little bit of seaweed, nori, and some uh, uh, you know, whatever you want, some spinach and some mushrooms, sure. and put different things. Kids are funny, but kids today are a lot different. So once you get to high school millennials, you got a whole new world because they're eating different things from tuna poke bowls and acai bowls and they're like, this is all good. Wonderful.